metal wings to fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code, 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 Signs can be tricky, it can overheat your brain. Signs can be hard to chew, each bite can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal pots about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret code. To it or your snout, whatever's in the middle of your face. Whoa, hey there, sweaty sports people. <laughs> Anybody seen my honey? Oh, there you are. <laughs> hey, Sky Bear, why do you always miss our daily exercise sessions? Uh, is that a joke? <laughs> There's no gravity here in space. All that exercise for what? There's no need to walk up here. <laughs> But you won't be up here forever. <laughs> you are planning on going back to Earth someday, right? Well, of course, I'll go back sometime. <laughs> Though, if I'm being truthful, I'd live like this forever. <sighs> My friend, you must see the importance of staying in shape, especially when you're in no-gravity environments. Your body needs it. But just floating is awesome. You should never take your health for granted, you know. If you don't look after yourself, Someday you'll be sorry. My health is fine, thanks. I'm strong as a bear. <laughs> Maybe for now, but when you're back in gravity again, your bones and muscles are not going to be nearly as strong as they once were. That might be true for all you guys, but we bears have muscles like steel, and our bones are like granite. <laughs> well, you're sort of right, but I still don't think you're getting it. Incredibly. Our bones are about four times stronger than steel. The secret to our bones' amazing strength lies in what bones are made of and how they're put together. The outer layer of our bones is a hard, compact mineral composite, but the inside is a collagen-based honeycomb matrix. That makes the bones somewhat flexible, and that flexibility protects us from breaks and helps make our bones able to withstand enormous pressure. If the entire bone were just the hard substance, it would be more vulnerable to breakage. Glass is a good example. If you smash glass with a brick, uh, don't do that, it falls to pieces. But notice that when glass is broken with a gunshot, if the cracks don't spread, the glass will stay intact. The cracks are what bring about further breakage. So, the flexible collagen within our bones prevents cracks and also prevents cracks from spreading, making our bones not just stronger, but less breakable. Told you they're strong. Well, didn't mean to interrupt your sweat festival. Have fun riding bikes and don't go anywhere. Toodles! Just forget what the bear said. Just five more minutes of pedaling, then you can go fly all you want. Ah. Oh. Just beautiful. Down, right? 
if I had to guess, something shorts the controls out and this moon's gravity pulled us down. Can't say the view does very much for me. I'll see any hotels. I don't know about you, but oh, my seatbelt seems to be really stuck. I can't get out of this thing at all. Don't bother to try. The short will have affected every electronic system on the ship. We need to turn on the emergency generator. Then all the systems will reboot. But who's going to turn it on if we're all hanging here upside down? Well, there's Barry. Well, we're going to be here for a while. What? just happened please what well whatever it was is a humdinger of a snafu no <laughs> oh. what's going on with me something's really wrong oh gee golly i can hardly move and i'm a bear a great big strong bear somebody help me uh -huh. Uh -huh. hey that's that's Barry! 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 Oh, boy. Uh, are you there? I can't see you. You ho uh, Just look up. What are you doing up there? Waiting to be rescued by a bear. All right. Here I come. Oh, turnips. Uh, what is happening to me? I can hardly move. Must have broken something in the crash. It's what we warned you about, Mr. Steel and Granite. Your body got used to no gravity. You haven't used your muscles in a long time, and they've gotten weak. Modern humans appeared somewhere between 100,000 and 200,000 years ago. And now humans have become the most powerful creatures on Earth. Our bones are stronger than steel, and our muscles can be strong and resistant. Of course, this wouldn't be the case without the effort of regular exercise. What now? <laughs> Bears are just born strong. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's true that with all our convenient inventions, physical labor is not as necessary to ensure survival as it once was. You can order pizza for dinner by moving a couple of fingers. And going to work just means getting into the car, pressing the pedals, and turning the steering wheel. I'm working up quite an appetite. Turning this wheel... Hit buttons on a keyboard. Oh. <laughs> While our lifestyles may have changed, our inner construction is essentially the same as our ancient ancestors. All of our modern conveniences have led to an increase in eating unhealthy food and a decrease in exercising. And as a result, many people are now overweight. In fact, almost two billion people worldwide suffer from the disease of obesity. Our bodies naturally conserve energy use and adjust to our intake and activity level. If we don't move enough, our metabolism slows and we lose muscle strength and bone mass. That's why it's so important for astronauts to exercise. I get it now. The exercise. I'll join in from now on, guys. Congrats on the breakthrough and all. But could you maybe get us down from here first? We need to turn on the emergency generator. Or else we'll be hanging here forever. But you have to be careful. Your bones are fragile right now. And while the gravity here on the moon is lower than it is on Earth, one careless move could cause a serious injury, even to a big, strong bear. And if you get hurt, we're all in serious trouble. But, you know, no pressure. Where's that generator? I hope it isn't far. The generator turns on with a big red lever. It's near the control panel. You can't miss it. Hmm? Uh, well, that couldn't be in a worse place. Careful. Uh, careful, careful. Uh, this is... No big deal at all for a normal bear, and a really bad idea for the bear with glass bones. 
strong bear. generator has been activated. While many people dream of simply taking a pill to control weight gain and prevent the loss of muscle mass, no such pill exists. And that's a good thing, because the best prevention and the best cure for obesity is eating good, healthy food and getting plenty of daily exercise. Then you'll be strong, healthy, and ready for anything. Sweaty sports people. Ah. <laughs> ah. Don't forget the tail of the broken bear. Pedal, or this could happen to you. Never! Faster! Faster! <gasps> Exercise, yeah! Take care of your muscles and bones, or you could end up exactly like me. <laughs> Outrageous. Four o'clock in the morning and they're still... I'm going! I'm going! I didn't get very far. <laughs> well, at last. Now I'll show you how it's done. Nine. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Who's the best player around? The players landed on the horror and despair square. Some player, eh? Huh? <laughs> roll the dice. If you roll less than 12, then you go back to the start. Severe. <laughs> I wouldn't underestimate me if I were you. <laughs> yeah. Ho, ho, ho. After passing the square of horror and despair, the player wins. Ha! Congratulations. Oh, hooray! Oh, that feeling of victory, that sensation of superiority! Easy! My knitting will come undone. Oh, your good luck cannot be denied. Pass me the pieces, please. Blind luck has nothing to do with it. My success is due to my branch antlers. <laughs> Baloney. This is typical antler envy from those who don't have them. What's to envy about antlers for those that don't have them? Exactly. Because we belong to the happy antler community. Right from birth, we all try to answer the question, who am I? 
And the only way we can do that is to contrast ourselves against the world around us. If we were completely alone, then there would simply be no I. I appears only when other also appears. We are aware of the boundaries of ourselves solely in comparison with others. Just like the we appears only when another group appears, a they, if you will. All through our conscious life, we try and align ourselves with some kind of group in order to connect with the world around us. Family, profession, hobbies, place of residence, groups can be very different. In this way, each of us can belong to several groups. For example, being a representative of a group of scientists, as well as being a member of the group of footballers, or for example, the good looking. By dividing the world around us on the principle of mine and theirs, we form an understanding of what is close to us and our tastes, habits, and goals. After all, without the feeling of my, we ourselves would feel alien to the world around us. But the owners of antlers don't have to worry, because right from birth, we belong to a very friendly and unique antlered community. Isn't that right, my kindred crowned friend? For sure. <laughs> Wait a second. I also want to be in your community. Apologies, but on what grounds? I've got hooves. But that's not horns. That's the eh? main thing. <laughs> of course. Without horns, I mean. <laughs> How about this? Uh -huh. And now? All right. But for now, just on a probationary period, horns must be continually worked on. Yes. Great. Horns and hoofs. 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 It's not that I'm envious, but there's something to it. Self-determination. And have you ever noticed that not everyone is fortunate enough to be the proud owner of a pair of wings? Yeah, yeah. Wings are power. Wings are power. Wings are power. Wings are power. Seven vertebrae in the neck portion of the spine, yeah. warm-blooded, yeah. a four-chambered heart, yeah. one left arch of the aorta, yeah. aerial structure of the lungs, teeth yeah. sitting in the jaw partition, yeah. and denuclearized erythrocytes. Uh -huh. Exactly! But those feathered ones mm. can do things no horned one can ever do. What's all the noise about? Uh-huh. I'm afraid the hornless wouldn't understand. And even more so, the wingless. So here we have, that is, the winged? Uh-huh. <laughs> and these are horned. They're fighting over who's more important. Precisely. But the world, by the way, is actually run by... Soft paws. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But two is not a crew. One minute. Don't you people ever sleep? And why is he uh, yours? Take it easy. Now take a look at would those spines. You... Technically, that's almost oh. a horn. What are you doing? Stop uh, passing the hedgehog around. Chico, he is not a toy, but very much a bird. Exactly! Just can't fly uh. too far. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Good little uh. bird. Right, get your horns and wings off our hedgehog. <laughs> Let him decide for himself that he's better off with us. <gasps> Who exactly are you with? Huh? Huh? <laughs> You're all bonkers. <laughs> Be an <laughs> eagle, huh? Low flying, huh? <laughs> to the rain. <laughs> <gasps> what weird games? I didn't understand anything. <laughs> <sighs> Mm. 
So release the bird from the cage, haunt, instinct, trust. You basically have horns. Are you sure you won't join us? But what for? We've got a flag! <gasps> uh? But there are even better flags! Mm. <gasps> huh? And we have already got an anthem! Group should decide what are the good and useful qualities that will unite us. Against what bad and wrong things do we stand united? And who is alien to us? What customs and rituals unite our community? And finally, how do we protect our space from strangers? We've lost our candidate. Where could he have gone? Hmm, I think he went upstairs. Geniuses. So that's why it's best to use a regular polish, because the shine on your horns lasts much longer. Ahem, uh aha. -huh. Isn't it time you finished up? You're not the only ones who eat here. Herring is bad for the digestive system. Oh, and I suppose hogging the shower for an hour is fine? It's all the winged ones. This is a provocation. You can never trust horns. Horns are the coolest. Softball's rule. We are the best. The problem is clear. The um flyer should be divided into three equal parts. Why do we have to divide things we were fined without it before, weren't we? Because it makes it much easier to distinguish oneself. <laughs> You should at least try to join someone. You'll feel the difference straight away. Attention, attention, everybody. I should state that the wonderful idea to separate is being rudely violated by unhorned individuals. The boundaries must be set more rigidly. But what do you propose? Cutting up the spacecraft? I'm not cutting. We can block the passages into the corridor and pump out the air. Then they won't pass. Really, the amount of paper wasted. Geniuses. Huh. Huh? Huh? Again. Yes. All those tribal division ideas completely failed. After all, there is one thing that binds us together. My wise old friend, do you happen to mean kindness? Collective insanity, my friend. Ugh. Geniuses. Uh. Let me in, please. <laughs> oh, there you are. <laughs> Stupid cliff! Why can't rocks be soft? Oh. 
Uh, uh, can I help you? Guess not. Come on! Uh, uh, no! The only cute thing on this whole planet! You see what we've stumbled upon? This new planet is amazing! We were even lucky enough to find water! Just think of all the amazing things we can find! Maybe even life! <laughs> can we call this planet Crashville? Uh, let's get some other suggestions first. can get all the way down to a hundred below. Whoa! A hundred below what? Whatever it is, I'm freezing my tail off. Come check this out. Something's down here. Whatever's inside certainly appears to be living. Phenomenal! It's like a present! Let's open it up and see what's inside! Mate! We must be careful! We can't hurt whatever's inside! I've seen this movie before. And what happens next is never good. Ooh. This is a bad idea, I tell you. Explorers bring back something cool from space. They take it all the way to their spaceship, they let their guard down, and disaster strikes. Uh, hang on. What disaster? Bad disaster. Let's say, the kind involving monsters. Imagine, you wake up and decide to check out our mysterious life form. But when you get in there... Huh, seems the ice has melted already. You consider waking someone else up, but surely everything is fine. But wait, what's that noise? Hang on, guys. Maybe we should wait and see what's inside first, before it's free. Yeah, and this is how we find out! Stop! Uh, hmm? There is a way to see inside without breaking it out! Wait, is this like a magic trick? Science is better than magic! Ladies and gentle creatures, please give a hand to our assistant in three, two, one! Can anyone see? What is inside this rabbit? No, we can't. He's solid. That's correct. There's no way we can see what's inside him because he isn't transparent. I believe it's due to the power of light photons. Visible light is pretty weak. Photons simply don't have the power to pass through solid objects. When it encounters something solid, like Crash, they just get reflected or absorbed. That's right. Your average photon is just too weak. However, we need to use something a bit more powerful. Let's look at a little bit of radiation. Oh, of course. 
X-rays have higher energy and can pass right through our soft tissue. But if X-rays go straight through our whole bodies, we still won't be able to see a thing. No, there are some things even these X-rays aren't able to pass through. Harder objects like bone just end up reflecting the rays. Let me show you. Here's how it works. Our bones are dense, but our other parts like skin, fur, and muscles are soft. So the X-rays pass through the soft stuff and stop at the bone. So, whenever we look at an X-ray, what we see are the parts that reflect radioactive photons. So we can see uh, Crash's unique diet. Anyway, are we clear now? Hmm? I'm not clear. If we were, we wouldn't need X-rays. That makes so much sense. We should X-ray our findings before breaking it out. How about we leave it on the planet? Just skip the X-ray entirely. No one asked me. I second that. One moment. Well, what did you see? Wait, it's not that simple. We have to process it. Once the image is processed, then we can analyze our data. So thrilling! Well, we are doomed. No, don't say that. By the time those images get processed, we'll all be eaten. Oh, it's not true. Oh, help! We're all going to be eaten by a space cliché. Save me! It's amazing! We discovered new life! I knew there was something incredible inside! Phenomenal! <laughs> Neato! This thing's finally almost melted! Well, thank goodness. I was freezing in there. Being stuck in someplace cold is basically the opposite of what bears are supposed to do. But, but, Barry, how did you get stuck in there? <laughs> I fell. It was not too bright. I thought it was mud, but no. <laughs> I froze instantly. <laughs> Guess the sun went down. Lucky you found me. It wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> and I've seen this movie before, too. <laughs> too good. A lonely astronaut left behind on a planet. Oh, no. <laughs> this outdoes the movie. <laughs> Barry, we're all just tickled pink that you're back, aren't we? <laughs> tickled pink? Uh, guys? Anyone seen Rosa? Get 
back. All of you are gonna pay. Oh, stupid planet. X-rays are credited to a German scientist named Wilhelm Röntgen. After he discovered the X-ray, other scientists wanted to call it the Röntgen ray. However, he instead just wanted to name his discovery X-rays. Röntgen had stumbled upon a new type of physics that no one else really understood. But he knew that what he had found could be useful. Seeing people's bones could help medical science immensely. His discovery was so impressive, he won the very first Nobel Prize in physics ever in 1901. The medical community could now flourish with x-rays. And this paved the way for other scientists to now get physics Nobel Prizes too. Like Max von Lau, who discovered more about x-rays. Or William Henry Bragg and Lawrence Bragg. Or Charles Barkla. They all continued to study x-rays and change what we know. Chico, did you see this? It turns out we have a talent contest coming up. I told you about it a week ago. You just forgot about it. Never mind who forgot what. It's already tomorrow and we don't even have an act prepared. Let's do our funny acrobatics like always. It's a crowd pleaser. Rocket. <sighs> With that repertoire, we'll never become stars, Chico. It's time to think of something new. <laughs> what do you say? I see you're rehearsing your acrobatics. Great. Your routine will close the show then. This time, we'll be doing something new. <laughs> Intriguing. Is this something to do with the construction kit? What? No, that's Chico. He's stuck in his childhood. It's a shame that you underestimate the construction kit. At an early age, we get acquainted with the world around us with the help of our hands. Although sometimes we test the world and taste. But the first stage of thinking is still called manual or effective. The child accumulates a repertoire of actions and movements, after which he moves on to the next stage, visual and figurative. At this stage, we learn to interact not only with the objects themselves, but also with images. And finally, the third stage, our development of speech, logic, and abstract thinking. The solutions to problems occur in the mind, and our main instruments of knowledge, our hand, becomes auxiliary. Thus, the development of thinking is given to us by our hands. And this has been confirmed by physiologists who have discovered a close relationship between the cerebral hemispheres and the nerve endings in our hands. Therefore, the most universal educational tool for any age is the constructor. He develops motor skills and coordination, as well as imagination, memory, and the ability to concentrate. All right, I still have to get around to the rest of the entrance. <laughs> Phoebe, do me a favor, and please look in on me later. The iron is playing up. Oh, holy carrots! How did you do that? It wasn't me. Phoebe, wait a minute. If you wave your hands... A magnetic constructor, Phoebe. That's your magnetic field. Chico! I know what we're gonna do for our act. We're gonna do some tricks. But do you think that's really fair? I mean, Bibi's doing all the tricks, and there's no mention of him here. What do you mean it's not mentioned? In the small print, at the bottom. Technical support is featured. Let's go. <laughs> And so, dear friends, we begin our talent show. Senor Wally and his merry tap dance.
And, and finally, on the stage, the mysterious Don Illusion and his assistant, Yejidze. A session of black and white magic. Behold that which cannot be believed. Ugh. Magic tricks, then. Oh. Well, look at you. I knew that. Amateurs. Impressive. Not bad at all. But where's the unbelievable stuff that was mentioned? The secret is very simple. That there is no secret. It's all the power of a rabbit's mind and years of hard training. Bravo! But you promised to tell everyone about BB. Chico, understand, we can't disclose BB's role. It'll destroy the magic. All the magic. But he does all the work, and we get all the credit. What do you mean, all the work? Firstly, whose idea was it? And who's the one jumping around on stage? Me! I can't do this. I don't want to play a magician anymore. Oh! That's how it is, is it? We'll just be fine. BB, let's go. After this performance. Solo performance, solo performance. Again, not a word about BB. Dear friends, before presenting this death-defying stunt of Don Illusion, allow me to furnish you with a brief history of the construction kit. This may seem strange, but there was a time when these wonderful construction kits did not exist. They were invented as recently as 1880. They were multicolored stone bricks from which it was possible to build models of buildings. By 1901, there was a construction kit made of iron with nuts and bolts. These were called improved toys or devices for the teaching of children and adolescents and presented more diverse designs. The toys quickly became popular and it's no surprise that these kits began to evolve and change thanks to new ideas and technologies. In 1903, a wooden construction kit appeared using sticks and holes in cubes to connect the parts. And in 1949, the plastic era finally arrived. These plastics snap in cubes meant that no additional attachments were required any longer. Then, at long last, the crowning creation of the toy, which is now loved by all, the magnetic construction kit, appeared in 2005. Attention all! It's starting. I, Don Illusion, the great and terrible, through the power of my mind alone, will build a bridge across this abyss and walk across it. What?
It's all planned. Frightening the audience, that's the key. Secret magnetic fields. So it was Bibi all along doing everything. Rodster. My sister, illusionist, and I believe. At least your conscience is clear now. That's better, isn't it? Oh yeah. Things have never been better. Oh wow. Did you do that? Look. There's nothing to it, really. Uh, cool. Ladies and gentle creatures, it's that time of year again. Cast your eyes on this fierce competition for Miss Macrocosm. Tonight, you will determine the winner by means of popular vote. Hey, don't forget that you promised her your vote. Don't forget our deal. <gasps> there can only be one. But who? Oh. Ah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's unanimous. <laughs> the votes are in. According to our audience, this year's Miss Macrocosm is, unsurprisingly, Rosa! <gasps> Congratulations, friend! <sighs> and now, let's see what you've won! Come on, Chef, let's eat! Best cake in the universe! <clears throat> Miss Macrocosm, made for you! Fantastic! <laughs> All good. <laughs> oh, Rosa. Just like the macrocosm itself. Like all space, you just remain the same. Well, actually, Wally, space is always changing. The universe is expanding and we'll keep doing it forever. Um, kind of like uh, a balloon. No. Oh. Hmm. Can the universe grow until it explodes? Oh, of course not. Let me explain it to you. At one time, the universe as we know it didn't even exist yet. So where was it? Sleeping? Not exactly. Before the universe, there was no mass, no energy, and even no time. Ooh, look! I'm gonna touch the thing! Stop! Better give that thing some space. At least a few billion billion miles worth of space. That tiny speck houses everything that will ever exist. And it's about to get a big wake-up call right about... Now! Welcome to the Big Bang! This is the moment at which time and space start to exist. And matter, and mass, and energy, and everything in between. These particles sped out from that explosion and eventually started to form stars and planets. It took 13.8 billion years for the universe to expand and create our world as we know it today. It's still speeding away? It's not just speeding away, Crash. It's getting faster and faster. It's the opposite of what you'd imagine, right? Scientists aren't exactly sure why this is. 
There's matter called dark energy that fills up most of the universe we can see. Our macrocosmos is expanding and we don't know why. We've got no idea. I am expanding. Just like the cosmos. Just no point in denying it. Tomorrow, I'll change. It's time for a workout. Whoa, what's this? Oh! What's going on? Anyone there? What is this? Who are you? I am the universe. I'm everything. The expanding cosmos. And you are? Oh, I'm Miss Macrocosmos, beauty queen. Though recently I've gained a, gained a few inches here and there. Gained a few inches, huh? <laughs> oh, friend, I grow millions and millions of miles every second. That sounds a bit dangerous. I'd be afraid that one day I just might, you know, explode. Explode? Explain. Like this. Watch. How do I stop it? It's self-discipline. Just... Avoid carbs! Aw, oh, come on now. But bread is so good. But so is not exploding. Let's be diet buddies together. I'm baffled, but our universe has stopped expanding. And actually, it's... it's shrinking. I can't believe it. Hooray! Atta girl! She's doing it! There's nothing good about this! I don't feel like things are shrinking. We can't be shrinking! This is a big deal here! Scientists have confirmed that the universe is shrinking! <laughs> How'd they do it? A big tape measure? I don't think that's what universal size means. Super long! <laughs> Not quite. Astronomers use a tool that is much more precise than that, which is light. Light? Of course it's light. In space, distance is measured by light years. One light year is the distance light can travel across the vacuum of space in one year's time. And there are thousands and thousands of light years between each star. I still don't get it. We use light to measure space? And we can see that it's shrinking? Easy. We know light is made of many different colors and waves. The color we see depends on that light ray's wavelength. Here's how scientists know which wavelength is which. Red has the longest wavelength, while violet has the shortest. Stars usually glow yellowish-white. They're constantly moving, which is how we can see them. The color of a star can tell us which way it's moving in relation to us. For example, if a star is coming near us, the light appears blue because of the shorter wavelength. 
And if it's speeding away from us, that light appears more reddish. The wavelengths are longer. So, if the universe expanded away from us, the stars would be redder? You're precisely correct. Even now, the stars are changing. Now they're blue, so the universe is shrinking. It's coming in quickly. Who cares? She's a beautiful universe. It's her choice. Well, we should care if we want to survive. This has some serious implications. Shortly, it seems the cosmos will reverse back to the Big Bang. Just a small dot. Um, so we'll get squished? We won't feel it. We'll burn up long before that happens. As stars get closer, the temperature will continue to rise, and all life will become extinguished in fire. <laughs> we'll explode, huh? No, first we'll catch fire. Man, this is gonna be crazy! What a ride! Whee! <gasps> hey, Miss Universe! Hey, workout pal! So, notice anything different? Like a few billion light years? Soon I'll be my goal size, my pre Big Bang weight, <laughs> just a point. Listen, you're setting impossible standards! You're jealous? No, actually not. Why, you're looking blue. And it's getting too hot. But it is my choice. Plus, I don't even crave sugar anymore. But you're beautiful just as you are. The wonderful, endless universe. You're all that is. You can't let your size define you. Plus, there's no point in lying to ourselves. Bread is just perfection. Um, I don't know. You're saying I should expand. Huh? Just be yourself, girl! Everyone benefits from just being themselves. I should know. I'm Miss Macrocosm. I'm the universe. I should decide for myself what beauty means. I reject ridiculous beauty standards. I am the all-powerful. And you're right. Red rocks! Yeah! Well, I guess this is it. We'll all be swallowed by the cosmos. Hmm. Question. Do you spell it last testament or test o -ment? A will. No one will be here for your stuff. I have good news. The universe is going to be just fine. Ha! You guys, we all get to live another day. <laughs> hey, who said you get all the cake, Missy? <laughs> You're welcome for saving the universe. She's beautiful. And so am I. Eat up, Rosa. I think we can all agree you're perfect <laughs> how you are. Agreed, agreed. Miss Macrocosm. <laughs> the universe's expansion was discovered by three scientists, Saul Perlmutter, Brian Schmidt, and Adam Rees. They figured out that the universe was expanding, though we still can't pinpoint the reason. They were each awarded the Nobel Prize for their astounding discovery.